All right, folks, in today's session, we're going to talk about why the Federal Reserve is absolutely full of it. We're going to break it all down, and we're also going to give you a special clip of Gary Gensler doing the song and dance that we just got from Jerome Powell speaking after the Fed's decision to pause interest rate hikes. So my prediction, the credibility, you know, that I was actually giving Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve, that they had what it took in them to raise another 25 basis points, but they didn't. They're backing off with a pause at this meeting. But they did leave on the table another interest rate hike later this year, and the expectation is not to start cutting rates until later next year. The market is now pricing in for September of 2024 before we get any rate cuts or the full Fed pivot. This is a form of soft pivot, and I'm going to try to do my best to break this down in the most simple terms. We don't need to get lost on the economic jargon and Jerome Powell's song and dance. I'm going to play you guys a clip of Gary Gensler. It's absolutely embarrassing quite frankly. Uh, but we got to talk about it, folks. So we get the Fed breakdown here today. Summary of Fed decision, September 20th, 2023. Fed pauses rate hikes, leaving rates unchanged. 12 Fed officials see one more rate hike, while seven Fed officials see no more rate hikes. So it's not unanimous consensus that we're going to get another rate hike, but well outnumbering the hawkish 12 members that want to see one more rate hike versus the seven dovish softies who see no more rate hikes. And we also see the Fed admitting that we're going to see rates higher for longer and that they see inflation at 2.6% in 2024. Cabessi letter asks, is the Fed pause finally here? Well, the pause is here. The soft pivot is here, but it looks like they are giving themselves room to raise one more time. And even into the end of 2025, the Fed sees inflation at 2.3% above the 2% target. So they're admitting and Jerome Powell confirmed in his uh, press conference that he did that we are not going to be achieving that 2% target. We're not going to give you a timeline on when we're going to achieve it. And we don't even think that we will by 2025. So good luck, America, riding out inflation. And now our target, now our goal, now we're just going to cheerlead if we get inflation heading in the right direction, which they have failed to in the last two months. We're taking back up from 3.2% to 3.7% is the reading that we just got last week. Inflation coming back. Real inflation on groceries and the good stuff that actually matters, well over 10 to 20% plus. So whether or not they raise rates against this year is not clear. I believe they will for sure. The only thing that doesn't stop them from raising rates this year one more time would be a black swan event, which in that event... Uh, it's just going to be absolute carnage in the markets anyways. They won't need to raise to bring back in inflation. We'll have a black swan event taking us out. Uh, what is clear, though, is that we get higher rates for longer. And uh, once again, that's, you know, excluding the event of a black swan, which kills us. Uh, we're going to have higher rates for longer. And so this is something that we've been talking about. The, just the fact that they don't have to keep on raising much more, just keeping them where they're at and then kind of holding this Basically, the effective Fed funds rate right now is about five and a quarter to five and a half percent. And as long as they keep it up at about this level, they've broke everything. And in the press conference that Jerome Powell gave today, he confirmed that they're absolutely full of it. They don't know where we're going because I'm calling it Powell's Pandora's box got opened up in 2020 when the Fed funds rate got cut to zero. They lent out money for free. Nobody had to pay for anything and everybody got free money. And they're admitting in the conference today, September 2023, that they still don't know all of the effects. They need more data. And he basically said, we won't know till we get there. Basically, we won't know you're dead in the street until we see you dead in the streets bleeding out. You know, and by the way, it's going to be, you know, it's, it's whether or not this is going to be a slow death or a quick death. I've been saying, pick your poison. We either have death through inflation or we have death through an economic recession. What do you want it to be? You know, and that's the situation at hand. And when you look right now, we see the two year note, uh, two year note on your U.S. two year bond rises as high as 5.15 percent, the highest since July of 2006. The two-year note yield is now up a massive 500 basis points since August 2021. It's only a matter of time before we see 8% mortgages and 30% interest rate on credit card debt. The Fed has made it very clear today, higher rates are here to stay. And it's funny, one of the first notes that I wrote down as I was listening to Powell's speech, the first one, is that he understands the hardship. 
he understands the hardship of the businesses that their cost of borrowing has doubled from where we were at. And for the average household, right, your median home is going to cost you 2800 We might as well just round up to three grand a month is going to be your mortgage payment on your average median U.S. home, which is about 400000 440000 somewhere in there, give or take. And then your average car payment now is over $700. So how about that for your American dream? You know, basically 37, nearly four grand out the door per month to live the American dream. How about that, America? And don't worry, Jerome Powell feels and understands the hardship that we feel right now in Main Street businesses and for the average family that's getting absolutely decimated. But once again, progress for the suits is paying for Main Street. That's the new uh, term that I've come up here, new, new phrase that I've come up with to describe this situation. And what I'm talking about is the job numbers. He's touting strong job numbers, a robust economy. What's happening? Folks are being forced to go get their second and third job. This is not something that we should be happy about. But once again, the suits get to take this data point and read it off like we've accomplished something, you know, uh, we're, we're taming inflation while we have a strong economy. No, you're not. The strong economy is a facade. You're manipulating the inflation data and inflation's about to kick back up. And you don't have the cojones to do what it takes and raise another 25 basis points. And that's what you guys should have done this meeting at the bare minimum. Now we're starting to see these yields break out. This is going to make everything go bust with these bonds going crazy. And the hedge funds are going short. And those hedge funds might get wrecked in that position if the Fed does stick to this and actually keep these rates elevated. These hedge funds that are going short, a record, there's a record net short of over 600 billion by the hedge funds right now on US bonds. And so they've gone massively short, basically betting on the Fed pivot. If the Fed doesn't pivot and actually sticks to their guns and keeps rates sustained, these guys going short are going to get wrecked. Now, this is what we're looking at right now for the 10-year, taking a look at this chart. Once again, you got to look back at levels that we didn't see since 2008, 2007. We haven't achieved levels like this uh, since 2007 for your 10-year. And then on the two-year, we're at levels that we haven't seen since July of 2006. I'll show you that chart as well. But I want to highlight, when you go look at February of 2020, March 2020, uh, March 2020 is when we bottomed out in the bonds and we went to zero. And the reason why we went to zero for not just the 10 year, but also for the two year, right? For all the bonds is because the Fed took the interest rates, the Fed, the Fed funds rate, they took to zero. They were lending out money for free, essentially. And that's why the bond yield went to zero because you weren't going to get anything on those bonds that you were purchasing. So we look at this. This is once again, levels that we haven't seen since 2006 back in here. This is on your two year and we're up to 5.17 right now. Now the high that we got in 2006, July of 2006 was about 5.2, nearly 5.3%. So we're well on our way. Once again, confirming that we are in the middle of a recession. We are in the middle of contraction. We are going to be going through some troubled waters, right? And they can paper it over. Jerome Powell can come out here and try to massage it. But that's why I titled the session, The Fed is Full of It, because they don't even know where we're going based off of the beast that they created, right? They created this, this whole issue, right? They blew this whole thing up, helicopter money for everybody. Nobody has to pay your debt. Nobody has to pay your rent. Nobody has to pay mortgages. Nobody has to pay student loan debt. And oh, by the way, here's some more money, right? They, they don't even know what they've created here. And Jerome Powell admitted that. Now... I've been trying to cut through this decode, right? What Powell's telling us versus what we read in the notes from the meeting, right? We have 12 hawkish Fed members that want to raise one more time. We have seven doves that are just softies, right? And that's typical. You know, we got the more Keynesian side of the economist on the Federal Reserve. And then we have more of the conservative. But no one's really conservative. No one's really for sound money. And once again, if you guys want to know where I'm at, I'm about to show you they just passed the bill in the House Financial Services Committee to ban the Fed from uh, doing a CBDC. That's not enough, right? I don't like the fact that I'm having to do a show here talking about the Federal Reserve. The institution itself is, is what is enslaving our country. And they are laughing at us while they tell us that they understand our hardship. 
And we've been hounding the point since last year, 2022, that folks need to have a plan. Folks need to be prepared. Inflation's not going away. And the real estate assets lagging. The equities markets are still uh, flying high, but they're set to correct in a massive way, right? And we are about to break out into a new financial system. It's going to be an incredible opportunity, but we still have some cleaning up. We still have some pain to come. Now, further to reiterate the point on why the Fed is absolutely full of it, this is the statements that they've been making since 2020. In March of 2020, inflation won't be a problem. January 2020, inflation is transitory. September 2021, interest rates won't rise until 2024. How about that statement? Interest rates won't rise until 2024. That is a rug pull. That is faking out the masses. Don't worry, little peasants. We won't raise rates on you till 2024. And then they rug pull us, right? Recession is needed to lower inflation. That's what they said in January of 2022 when we did enter into a recession. Q1, Q2 of 2022. December 2022. Disinflation has begun. Uh, February of this year. A soft landing is possible. They're still saying that a soft landing is possible. Even with the whole world, even with the markets on fire all around us, they're talking about a soft landing still occurring. And then uh, March of this year, 2023, banking system is stable. <laughs> the banking crisis is still underway. We just had another bank go under last month. We still have you know, dozens of banks that are right on the brink. We have $600 billion of losses on bonds that these banks hold. So th this is troublesome. Now, this year, uh, September 2023, inflation won't hit 2% until 2025. That's what they're telling us now. They're, they're giving up, right? Just, just We don't even have a goalpost. We don't even know. The, the goal gets made up as we go. Whatever makes us feel good. Not a single statement has been correct. Has the Fed lost their credibility? I think you guys know how I feel. You guys let me know in the comments down below what you think about the Federal Reserve. And basically, we just have to take them at their word until they just lie, pivot, and rug pull us, and then the market moves the other way. They've just been rigging this thing back and forth. They created this whole problem, and then they want to show up and be their, uh, our saviors. And they want you know a strong economy and price stability. Have we achieved either of those? No. Now, like I said, House Financial Services Committee passes bill to ban the Federal Reserve from creating a CBDC, and that's a good start. We also need to do an audit, and I would argue that we might need to end the Federal Reserve. We could probably actually do without a central bank, believe it or not. Let's return to some sound money, right? And let's bring it back to the Treasury where it's supposed to be at. Shout out to Rosie Rios, 43rd Treasury of the United States Board of Directors at Ripple. Let's bring it back to Rosie's department over there at the Treasury. Not with Janet, no telling yelling at the helm, though. If we do that, we're going to be in trouble. And if you want to just see further how much of a joke these guys are, and boy, this gets me excited here, folks. We caught them. We caught them all. Good guy Gary Gensler has been busted, and he's been handed some fat L's. And he is looking like a deer in the headlights when he gets asked about it. Folks, check out this clip here. Gary Gensler, U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission Chair Gary Gensler says a government shutdown would, need, would, would mean normal oversight of markets would be impossible. Oh, no. What a travesty that would be if the government shut down and the SEC wasn't able to protect us. I couldn't imagine. The world would probably stop spinning, wouldn't it? Folks, listen in on this. Look at this guy with the deer in the headlights. This is actually hilarious. When you take collectively recent court decisions we have seen, how have they made you, Gary Gensler, think differently about regulating this space? I'll tell you, I think the same thing. It's about ensuring for compliance and protecting the investing public. And this is a field, uh, it kind of reminds me a bit of the 1920s securities markets 100 years ago, where a lot of people were getting hurt. And Congress came along and said, we've got to clean that up. And of course, we had the Great Depression. And um, the securities laws apply so what he's saying is that if we don't have the SEC's protection, right, we're going to have another 1920 style hyper, you know, hyper crash into a Great Depression once again. If it's not for good guy Gary Gensler protecting us, right? To crypto security tokens. And there's nothing incompatible 
with those tokens, with the securities laws, Investors still benefit from disclosure, and investors get to choose based on that disclosure. Investors benefit from laws against fraud and manipulation and, and other um, conflicts in the markets. And we've just seen so many people hurt and lost their money, hoping for a better future. And, and who have they saved? Who have they helped out? I haven't seen any fair funds to, you know, distribute to folks that have actually been harmed or better yet, preventing stuff before it actually happens. The rampant fraud, your buddy, Sam Bankman Freed, paying his parents a million per year, tens of millions of dollars in payouts, right? Who are you? What, what are you talking about protecting anybody? You're supposed to be the cop on the beat, right? Cop on the beat, but you're supposed to stop it before the crime is committed. But you always come in after here to save the day. And then he wants to tout his friend's operation and scheme, FTX, as one of the examples for why he needs to come in and protect us. It's like, no, if you just actually weren't part of the corruption in the schemes, i.e. being the CFO of the criminal campaign conspiracy, we better not talk about that one. Just unbelievable. And there's so many hucksters and fraudsters in this field. And so nothing any court would say would change your mind on that. I wish something a court could say which would actually. Um... We got him, folks. Good guy Gary Gensler has been got. Are you kidding me? Bring the compliance <laughs> sooner, but this was a field that was built as a global field. So a lot of it's outside of the US. And we have very robust securities laws in this country. Um, Struggling. Having said that, there are a lot of folks in this field that are trying to um, say, well, those don't apply. He's such a little creep, right? It's just, I want to protect you. It's just creepy, man. We don't need your protection, okay? We got Twitter that provides some of the best financial education and resources in, 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 way ahead of you. We've been uncovering all this fraud, all this deception. If you want to know what took place, we got the timelines. We have the maps. Oh, you're connected in on it, though, aren't you? And that's the whole problem. And it's an absolute joke. From the Federal Reserve, we got Janet No telling Yellen running the Treasury. They're all touting that we're going to have a soft landing and that we should be cheering on Bidenomics. Of course, Powell doesn't want to act political, right? Nothing that he's doing is based off of politics. We got Biden. Does he even know where he's at? And good guy Gary Gensler that just creeps me out listening to the guy talk. And I was getting sick enough listening to Jerome Powell talk earlier today. Drome is way better than Gary. I mean, Gary is just like, you get the chills. Like, listen to the guy, you're just creeped out. And it's an absolute joke. And you can see, though, this is the best part, guys, is we absolutely got him. You can see. Would any decision from a court make you change your mind? Any dances, any pauses, any hymns, any haws, any rubs his fists together. He can't handle the truth. And he knows he's been caught. And they've been getting continued, continuously getting caught in the cover-up. That's, that's the whole deal. And now we have ETH whistleblowers to add to the timeline. We have more and more speaking out. And as soon as one really comes forward and this blows open, we're going to see even more step up. And you're starting to see NDAs expire. This whole great thing is about to get unveiled, not only on the corruption. It's, continue, it's, a, it's a steady stream of truth coming now. It's not just little drips, one good story a week, one good story a month. It's every, every, every day we're getting a flow of truth coming out. And the media doesn't know what to do. They're in full panic mode. And Gary Gensler doesn't know what to do during the headlights. Hello, Gary. Earth to Gary. Wake up, bud. Smell the coffee. Okay? You're getting handed some pretty fat losses. The truth and the facts and the circumstances and the law is not what you pretend it to be. You know, you have been handed a historical loss by Judge Torres. 
precedent that expands out to many other situations and circumstances where you think that you have complete jurisdiction and you don't. Now, to Gary's credit, he has plenty. He has plenty to go after. I've been saying it forever. Whether it's Gary Gensler at the helm or whether he's about to step on to his new role, right? He'll give us a Bitcoin ETF. He'll settle up with Ripple. He'll say, I love you guys. Let's be friends. And then he's going to move on to Treasury or whatever they got for him next, right? The SEC, whoever's running it, has plenty of ammunition to go after the rest of the space. And that's what's going to be coming. So at the end of the day, let's wrap this up and conclude this up in the final 60 seconds. If you guys haven't already, may, please make sure that you've smashed a thumbs up on this one as we conclude. So more pain on the way. Progress for the suits is pain for Main Street. So while they're papering over that they're fighting inflation, that the jobs numbers are fantastic, the reality on Main Street is businesses shutting doors, folks having to go get a second and third job just to get by. Every time you go to the grocery store, it's 300 bucks plus. You go to fill up the tank, it's over 100 bucks. We're back up for oil. We're back up for gas. We're going to continue up. Biden's having to fill back up the strategic petroleum reserves at 90 bucks a barrel plus, completely wrecking us on that trade that he's done. And apparently he's willing to even drain the strategic petroleum reserves even further. So this is the absolute setup of the American people and our economy and our way of life as we know it. When we talk about all the issues and, you know, put all the variables and input into this grand equation and thesis that we've put together here. And what we are doing right now is I'm protecting my wealth and uh, doing that with precious metals. I've invested in digital asset. I'm looking at other equity plays and I have a little bit of my portfolio that is ready to go for risk, but we've gotten liquid. We got cash and we're ready to move on the real estate asset class. That's going to be a lagging asset class over the next couple of years that gets reset. An all time high amount of apartments are being built and coming online this year. A lot of that's been finance secured before the rates went crazy. Now, when we go to reset, now when we go to do new home construction, the builder sentiment's already fallen off from the National Association of Home Builders. That was confirmed on Monday. And now we're starting to see, too, the, the supply coming online for apartments. That's what's been able to get financed. Now, when we go to reset over a trillion dollars worth of commercial real estate over the next year, we have a real estate reset. We have to come back down to, to earth here. We've all been in participation trophy economy mode. And like I said, it's a bitter pill to swallow because folks don't want to die but we have to go through this pain and you won't end your life as we know it won't end, right? You're not going to die financially speaking, right? This is, this is where we, we grow, where we're reborn, a stronger financial system, a return to sound money, a return to real commodities being what's valued on the world stage, not just fiat and funny money that's, you know, shared around and enforced through the end of a barrel of a gun. And that's the situation back home. Massive pain. The rug pull continues. Interest rates are going to be remaining elevated longer, higher and longer. And that's going to kill us, financially speaking. Now, in the markets, when we look at crypto, I think we're very close to a bottom. We have a little bit more cleaning up to do. We got crypto bills that are being proposed. We got Ripple in DC. XRP is in its own reality and it could break out at any time. You guys already know we've been talking about September settlement and other fun stuff. We'll see if we get any an, a crazy announcements. Less than 10 days now till we get to the proper party. And uh, that's something we're watching over there. But I'm waiting for the, the rest of this market to get cleaned up. For a correction in the broader stock market. For a correction in the cryptocurrency market. We get brought back down a little bit more. And this is going to be a fantastic opportunity to pick on up. I just picked up some silver just a couple days ago. Took advantage of sub $25 an ounce silver. Thank you very much. I'll scoop that up. But what we're focusing on right now is getting liquid because this is going to be a sale of a lifetime. It's just a matter of when in the cycle will equities go on sale, when crypto will go on sale, when real estate will go on sale, when used cars are going to go on sale. It's kind of all happening simultaneously, but real estate's lagging, crypto moves first, equities, you know, are, are right at the front of that too. So you got to be prepared and understand all of this, be able to put this whole thing together, stack cash and invest in what you know, whether you know business, whether you know real estate, whether you know stocks, whether you're a, a, a trader, invest in what you know and take advantage of the sale of a lifetime that's coming up here over the next year or so. And I think that we have chaos, we have distractions, we have them setting it on fire, metaphorically and literally speaking. 
So stay safe. We've been prepping. We've been preparing. We've been trying to stack as much cash as possible with our savings. We look at precious metals. I got the link on down below or go to my website if you're looking to get precious metals. We got you covered. If you want to get tapped in with our community, I just hopped off of a hangout call that we had yesterday. We had another two exclusive calls uh, just this past weekend. A lot more exclusive content coming this way. Now is a fantastic time to invest in your education, invest in a program, whether it's my program, whether it's somebody else's program, just ask, you know, what's my plan? What's my exit strategy on all my positions that I'm taking right now? How am I going to continue to grow my side hustle, my business? Do Am I going to have a job a year from now? We have to run through this whole thing, get our house in order. And if you want to maximize your opportunity here, we're going to be able to understand all of these asset classes for a full encompassing strategy and portfolio that we'll be building out so that we can benefit off of all of these market moves. I appreciate everyone for tuning in. Once again, the Federal Reserve is absolutely full of it. Gary Gensler is full of it. What I try to do is cut through all that noise, confusion, and give you guys it broken down in simple terms in a way that you can apply it to your life. And I want to see all of you guys win. If you appreciate the content, let's smash it on the way out. And I will see you in the next one. God bless you all.